Hello, I'm Paul Cattridge, and I'm here to join you after too long an absence from making videos, and I'd like to talk about a new piece of my pottery that I felt had an interesting story attached to it, and is a good way to sort of introduce me back into your lives, and hopefully you into mine. I miss my friends, and it's time that I started rejoining the 21st century. But here's a new piece that is just about to be sent off to its to a, to a, a very welcome new owner in California. But before it goes, I wanted to talk about it a little bit. Uh, I called this piece Altamira, which is a name derived from the uh, Spanish prehistoric caves, which are famous for their for their cave illustrations. I don't talk about process with my pottery very often, and honestly. Though most people seem to be most interested in, in glaze chemistry, formulae, how things are thrown on the wheel, I think, I don't know, somehow the thought process and the ideas behind the pots are much more interesting to me than something that can be read in a book. The pieces, at least my pieces, evolve in very unusual ways. I often, it's, it's amazing how often I don't end up at the place where I started. On this piece in particular, I had originally, the color combinations that exist on it had originally been derived from a mineral sample. I'd seen some images of some beautiful minerals that had some elaborate crystals that were red and, and brown and coming in different directions, and it seemed like that was a good departure point for the pot. As I started making it, I discovered that it was evolving in a different direction. It had something else to say, and then I started thinking autumn leaves. Then off we went in that direction, and I had images images of leaves in my mind, and also a very extensive photographic library, and some of the colors started moving in that direction. As I realized, there is a flow from from one one kind of nature to another: mineral minerals, plants, the sky, something even from inside one's mind. They're all the same. They're they're all a part of the same continuum of nature. The black lines on this on this on this piece, which were sort of to emulate the subdivisions of of uh, one of the minerals and crystals that I'd seen images of, ended up looking am amazingly like human figures. And I realized once the piece had actually been fired and it achieved its full promise, that it looked like something that exceeded my in initial grasp. It's not unusual for me to make pots. Where that there are, it's it's much like like the like the old tales of Scheherazade and the Arabian Nights. I sort of never seem to start from the I start from one place and I sort of never seem to end up exactly where I had intended. It's a story. The pottery seems to be a story within a story within a story that never really ends. I'll start at one point and then like the branches of a tree, I'll move off to another point. And then a new idea will enter my head, and then another branch will go, and then further and further and further. And somehow it gets farther and farther from the original story, but I think it always, at least in the best instances, ends up where it's supposed to be, at least in the last analysis. Uh, I, I, it's very, very important to let the pieces tell, dictate to at least a certain extent what it is they want to be. Pottery is... Although a very serious art form, and God knows a very old art form, it's not quite like painting or drawing or even watercolors. If you make a lot of mis if if mistakes are made or the pot's overworked, it eventually will sort of self-destruct. It will let you know that it has a few moments for you to work with it, and then it's gone. There has to be an immediacy in the process. I'm sort of a very spontaneous person. I'm a very careful person, but I'm also very spontaneous. I'm very spontaneous in my art. It's not interesting to me to make something if it isn't in a state of becoming until the very end. Once it's reached that point, I can let it go. But while I'm work, well, well, the I, pottery generally is 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 a process where everything has to be planned. All the glazes have to be compounded. Hours are spent grinding, sieving, polishing. It, it takes an immense amount of time before one can actually get to the point of putting colors on a pot. I often am a little bit jealous of those that uh, pursue painting or drawing or some other charcoal, whatever it may be, some medium that's a little more immediate, because 
right away, the instant one decides to make a dis to, decides to make a work of art, you've got a handful of colored pencils splayed out in front of you, paints, whatever it may be, and within moments you're you're in the process doing it. With pottery, everything has to be laid out with unbelievably meticulous care to the point where it often robs ceramic works of their immediacy. It robs them of their moment. And if I can't create something in my own head where I can work on it as I'm making it, it seldom comes out well in the last instance. I ruin a lot of pots as a consequence. I often say that, uh, you know, I make a lot of bad pots. I simply don't sell them. I destroy them. They're not brought out into the marketplace. They're for me to use in the studio and to sort of remind myself of all the uh, problems that I can cause for myself. But I want them, I, I this one was just, it, it just, this one was one of those magical pots that just exceeded my grasp. To me, the black lines look for all, look for all the world as if, as if the shadows of ancient figures in some sort of a, a primal rite, like an, like, a, like an historic cave, like Altamira, like Lascaux, like, uh, like Stonehenge, perhaps. Where I, I once once the piece was completed, I could see I could see figures engaged in some sort of uh, tribal dance in the firelight. The piece can just as easily be autumn leaves, or it can suggest the original mineral sample that I had intended, or something that I hadn't even thought of. I mean, the day will certainly come when I'm no longer making pottery and I'm not here anymore, and hopefully some of these pieces will survive me. And they'll have a story all their own, and it's not for me to dictate what they are. Someone will turn this up on a shelf in a collection, and they'll know little about me, but the piece will have to speak for itself, and hopefully they'll find something in it that uh, inspires them, something that may not yet even exist. So it's not for me to dictate too much exactly what the piece contains. That's for the, that, that's for the owner. And it is a container, after all. Bad pun. Hopefully, and with every good intention, I will be making a great many more of these videos now that the, the technology will allow me to do so. And I'm back. I'm I'm back working in a very in, on a on a st on a steady pace. And I'm exploring things that I've let gestate that have sort of laid dormant. And I'm feeling I'm feeling the energy. I'm feeling the energy once once more. I know I know I'm a I know I'm a I know I'm a serious guy and I take my pottery very seriously. But it's important to me. It is a legacy. It is something that I've made to last. And but I sincerely hope that you and anyone that gets a hold of one enjoys it and continues to enjoy it for a very long time. Now, I thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, I again hope that there will be many more videos in short order. I'm not going to be talking about every last little pot that I make, but occasionally a piece like this is just sort of special, for want of a better word, magical. And it takes on a life of its own, and it deserves to be commemorated or recorded. So, thanks to the wonders of technology, we're back again. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope to see you soon, because I really love my friends. I depend on my patrons and the kindness of the many people that have allowed me to continue doing what I'm doing. Thank you so very much. Take care.